Void 3.0 is here, and now that Vow of the Disciples World First Raid race is over, we finally have access to all of the Void subclass fragments. This means we can truly start creating builds for all the Void subclasses. For reference, these builds are focused on endgame PvE content, like the legendary version of the Witch Queen campaign, Master Lost Sectors, and Grandmaster Nightfalls. There are three parts to this build. First, I'll cover which armor mods I equipped and why I'm using them. Next, I'll go over my preferred Void abilities, aspects, and fragments. And finally, I'll discuss which exotics I think you should use. This Void Walker build focuses on the following Elemental Well armor mods. Well of Tenacity, Elemental Time Dilation, Reaping Wellmaker, and Volatile Flow. If you are new to Destiny, or if you are a returning player who's unfamiliar with Elemental Wells, these are those small glowing puddles you'll see on the ground if someone is using specific armor mods to create them. You personally don't need to equip any special armor mods to pick them up, and if you do, you'll get some ability energy back. However, these offer a wide range of powerful benefits for collecting them if you equip certain armor mods. Quick note for those of you watching this video after Season of the Risen is over and the Volatile Flow Seasonal Artifact mod is no longer available, I will go over how you can still get the Volatile Rounds buff from your Voidwalker subclass fragments later in the video. So what do the armor mods I mentioned actually do? Let's go over Reaping Wellmaker first because this is the catalyst for everything else we're trying to do. This mod guarantees your next weapon final blow after using your class ability will always spawn a Void Elemental Well. It doesn't matter if that weapon is a primary, special, or a power weapon. It also doesn't matter if it's kinetic, solar, arc, stasis, or void. This gives you freedom to choose the weapon you'll need for modifiers like match game and to counter champions. Picking up that void elemental well you create thanks to the Reaping Wellmaker activates Well of Tenacity, reducing the damage you take from enemies in PvE for 5 seconds. This effect shows up on the lower left corner of your screen as the Resist buff. You can combine this damage resistance with an arc, solar, or void resistance armor mod on your chest piece to deal with the elemental damage buff the enemies in that activity will also have. You'll need at least two pieces of armor with void affinity equipped with one copy of this mod each, so the next part of our build, the elemental time dilation mod, can stack that damage resistance and make it last twice as long. This is a stasis aligned mod costing 3 armor energy. It stacks your time limited benefits from elemental well mods and extends the duration of those effects. This is what raises your stacks of resistance from 1 to 3 and extends its duration from 5 to 11 seconds. The loop for this build is simple. You'll use your class ability, kill an enemy with any one of your weapons to spawn a void elemental well, pick up that well, and then use the 11 seconds of damage resistance to clear packs of minor enemies, revive a teammate, or deal with champions and bosses. If you're using this build during Season of the Risen, then you can equip the Volatile Flow artifact mod on that fifth and final piece of armor, giving you volatile rounds when you pick up that well too. If you're using this build guide after Season 16, then you should use whatever you want for your final armor mod. This is where you'll have the chance to customize the build to suit your personal playstyle. Here are a few quick recommendations. Elemental Ordnance spawns elemental wells when you kill enemies with your grenades. This is a great general purpose mod that works really well with several fragments, aspects, and exotic armor pieces. Font of Might is another universal armor mod. This improves your equipped void weapons damage by an extra 25% damage for several seconds after you pick up a void well. This is a good option if your favorite void weapons don't have perks like one for all or frenzy. Well of Utility will give you 6% of your class ability energy back when you collect void wells. This is a more valuable mod if you're not running 100 recovery. This might be the case if you're a newer player and if you don't have armor with good stats on it yet. My suggested abilities for this build are the Vortex Grenade and the Healing Rift. Vortex Grenades are amazing for stunning overload enemies during Season of the Risen thanks to the Overload Grenades Seasonal Artifact Armor mod. The majority of Voidwalkers should be using Healing Rift for keeping you and your fireteam alive when your Devour buff isn't active. It can be the only reliable way to heal when there are modifiers that stop your recovery from healing you as quickly as it should. There's one exception to this, and that's if you're using the Secant Filament Exotic Legs. More on that in a minute. For Void Aspects, I am suggesting Child of the Old Gods and Feed the Void. Child of the Old Gods will spawn a Void Soul every time you use your class ability, which will travel to and begin damaging and weakening enemies in the area where you're dealing damage. If you're using Healing Rifts, Void Soul will return grenade and melee energy to you as it deals that damage. Conversely, Void Soul will heal you instead of providing ability energy if you're using the Empowering Rift. Feed the Void gives you the Devour buff when you score a Void ability final blow, instantly healing you to full health for 10 seconds every time you land a final blow. Killing enemies while Devour is active will extend that timer. Both of these aspects come with two fragment slots each, giving you a total of four fragments to work with for the rest of your build. For fragments, I'm going with Echoes of Obscurity, Remnants, Resistance, and Undermining. Echo of Obscurity will make you invisible for a few seconds after you perform a finisher. It also comes with a passive bonus of 10 points to recovery. Being able to finish a champion without having to worry about his buddies teaming up on you immediately afterwards is huge in endgame PvE. This fragment mostly takes care of that and gives you time to collect any ammo or elemental wells lying on the ground. 
The Echo of Remnants fragment makes your spike, void, wall, vortex, and axiom bolt grenades last longer. In this case, we're combining this fragment with the Overload Grenade Seasonal Artifact mod on our class item to keep Overload Champions stun locked long enough to deal enough damage to finish them and then get the invisibility buff from the Echo of Obscurity. And thanks to the Echo of Undermining Fragment, not only will our Vortex Grenades last longer, they'll also weaken the enemies, causing them to take an extra 15% damage while they're taking damage from that Vortex Grenade. Unfortunately, this will come with a penalty of minus 20 to your discipline stat, but that's not really a problem thanks to all the elemental wells you'll be picking up and all the energy that you're getting back from your Void Soul when it deals damage to groups of enemies. Finally, there's Echo of Resistance, which helps our Devour and Invisibility buffs last longer. This might not seem very strong to a new player, but it could mean the difference between clutching up and reviving your teammate in a Grandmaster or getting sent back to orbit because your team wiped at the boss. Yes, this fragment does come with a minus 10 penalty to your mobility stat, but that's really only going to hurt hunters and they can always dodge to go invisible when they need to. As promised, if you're watching this guide after Season 16 and you want those hot and spicy volatile rounds, then you're in luck. Even though you don't have the Volatile Flow mod anymore, you can equip the Echo of Instability Fragment. This gives you an extra 10 points of strength and grants your Void Energy Weapons volatile rounds whenever you defeat targets with your grenade abilities. Alright, let's talk about Exotic Armor. First up is the Static Helmet. This Exotic Helmet's trait is Dearly Departed. Your Rift provides damage reduction to allied guardians standing in it, including you. The stack also gives you rift energy when you're critically wounded, which happens a lot in endgame PvE. So every time you use and stand in your healing rift, you're both taking less damage and healing that damage. Additionally, it'll also drop a rift on your corpse when you die, giving the person who comes to rescue that damage resistance. The second exotic armor piece I'm recommending for this build are the Luna Faction boots for their alchemical etchings perk, making reloading any equipped weapon much faster for you and any friendly players standing in your healing or empowering rifts. This is a better option when you're at or above power level 4 in activity, as they prioritize dealing damage as quickly as possible over survivability or dealing with champions. I should also mention these exotic boots extend the effective range of your weapons while standing in an empowering rift. The new exotic legs, Cant Filaments, will turn any weapon of yours or any member of your fire teams into an anti-overload weapon, provided it doesn't have any intrinsic anti-champion traits or any anti-champion armor mod slots equipped. This alone makes it a new favorite exotic, but on top of that, this exotic armor also gives you Devour if you're using an Empowering Rift. I cannot put into words how frustrating Overload Champions can be in Master and Grandmaster content, especially if they're holding hands and the only Overload weapons the season gives you are Auto Rifles and Submachine Guns. Wissacant Filaments equipped almost any weapon you want to be an anti-overload is now an anti-overload. Aeon Soul deserves a mention for its Sect of Insight mod, giving your fire team power ammo whenever you finish a champion or elites. Power ammo is really important in endgame content for being able to delete champions and boss health bars, so don't overlook this exotic if you're running into problems with ammo economy in Grandmasters or the Raid. Picking the right exotic armor comes down to understanding what you and your fire team need for the content you're playing. Take a few minutes before you step into that nightfall to identify any gaps in your champion mods and how you'll deal with any troublesome mechanics or enemies. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me on Twitter at Kripoff, and I'm also now on TikTok under the same name. Bye for now.